Have that one friend, right? You know, the friend that is the loudest in the entire group. That one friend that always seems to draw the attention. That friend that always seems to mess up, but sometimes mess up in a good way, has the attention of the crowd. If you don't know who that person is, then you're the person. And that's not a bad thing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Reed, and I am your host tonight on I Can't Take You Nowhere. And I'm the one they can't take nowhere. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. But you can always take me to the bank. Hey! Ha! Oh, we're going, we're going to have so much fun tonight. And just coming to you from the warmth of quarantine style. You know, quarantine has gotten us all really creative. Even got the creatives, even more creatives. You got to stay quick on your toes. Think about that real quick. I'm not quick anywhere at this point in my life. I might be quick wit, but quick on my toes? Not gonna happen. I am part time fat, ladies and gentlemen, and I have accepted that. Sometimes I'm fat, sometimes I'm skinny, and most times I'm in between. You gotta know it's like being the, the, the center of a sandwich. Sometimes I'm skinny, sometimes I'm fat, but I like to be in the sandwich. You know, in the sandwich, which is not bad. It's almost time for a sandwich. <laughs> oh, y'all, it's, it's good to laugh. It's so good to laugh. And I'm gonna be that sandwich tonight between two great comics. I am bringing you two great comments tonight. We're first gonna go all the way to the north on the other side of the Mason Dixon line, up to my hometown, Shot Town to be exact. We're first gonna go all the way to the north on the other side of the Mason Dixon line, up to my hometown, Shot Town to be exact. We're going to the south side of the city of Chicago where we're gonna have a wonderful time with Mr. Corey E. Bailey. And then when we leave Chicago, Later on in the show, we're going to come back on this side of the Mason Dixon line. We're going to get some of that Southern hospitality from a Southern gent, a Southern gentleman, you know, right out of Alabama, who is an import right here in Georgia now, Mr. Rod Minger, you know, AKA is a pretty boy, new. you know, he pretty to his left, he pretty to his right, he just pretty, you know. So what I want you to do during this commercial break, go to the bathroom, empty your bladder, because we're going to tickle your fancy, we're going to cramp your stomach, we're going to bring tears to your eyes with laughter. But let me tell you one thing. We cannot be responsible for any wet clothing. Because if you laugh hard enough, you pee on yourself because your cankles ain't right where it used to be. Ha! That is on you. You can depend on the pen, man. You can depend on God. But you can't depend on us to keep you dry tonight. We want you to laugh until you can't laugh no more. Because I can't take you nowhere. I just want to thank you to Homestead Missionary Pentecostal and me, seeing me just because of you and me that we are quarantined, you see, at home. And just like Pastor say, Pastor say that we should be prepared to give all honor to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that's also through the sacrament of communion. Uh huh. You know, you always have someone in the midst. You know, a church, a church child when you see them because they come prepared. That's what Corey Bailey is. He's a church child. He came prepared to teach us about the ways and the rules and the regulations that happen in the church. Can't nobody do that but the church folks. So now we're going to get ready for this here sacrament. And I just want you to know that I am ordained deaconess. Lindoros, P from pain. Yes, the P is for the pain that I endured in the streets. Yes, God. And now I have been delivered. So today we're going to have a little communion. But wait a minute. I got to get that dog on. I can't get the bottle opener. Where is the bottle opener? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Corey E. Bailey, and I have actually taken the stage over. That's right. It is time for COVID comedy, Corona comedy. 
COVID comedy, Corona comedy, I'm a lot of C's. Well, listen, I only have one job today, guys. My job is to help you understand what you've been missing. See, I know for a fact that some of you have been locked in your homes. You haven't been able to come outside and play like you used to. And most importantly, you have not been able to come to church. And because you have not been able to come to church, you have missed some of the things that take place in church. So I'm here. It is my job. <laughs> it is my responsibility. It is my job. To remind you of some of the things that you might have missed. Prime example, what's the number one song that we sing all of the time in church, but we don't know Aaron Road to? Okay? Now, before I start singing and you critiquing me on my singing, let's just say this. Some of you are in the choir that need not be in the choir. You're only in the choir because they told you that you can be in it. But it's not because you know how to sing. As a matter of fact, some of you choir members need to be a part of the band ministry. But we're not going to talk. We're going to go back to what's the number one song that we sing all of the time in church that we don't know am word to. Now get in where you fit in when I go ahead and bring you in. Okay, you ready? I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I love the no, we be green eggs and ham, Sam. I am. You don't know what they saying. How you know they ain't saying Sam and eggs and green eggs and ham? How you know you don't know what they saying? See, there's a judging spirit coming on this side of the team. I come against that judgment spirit. And then, wait a minute, let's talk about another auxiliary. Huh? What about these men? Huh? The men that sit in the suits and they sit in the front row. You know what they call deacons, huh? Let's talk about the deacons. Let's go ahead and elaborate on the deaconship for a minute. You only need two things in order for you to be a deacon. One is you need a pocket full of peppermints, and two, you need a gun permit. That's all you need to be a deacon. And then let me tell you something about these deacons. You gotta watch them close. See, I used to play drums, so I sat in the front. So I had a front row seat at the deacons. If you pay any attention to the deacons, how do they sit? Hmm? Sit with their hands. You like this, right? You notice that? And all of a sudden, as they sit with their arms folded, You'll notice that they start listening to the word of the damn preacher. Man, the God is preaching good. And they, they, yes, sir! <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Woo! You are preaching today. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Lord, that's good. <laughs> now, by this time, they don't. They do teach you. Watch how you wake up. Mm, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. See, I've watched and studied the all of the See, I've seen the internal workings of the deacon. And then in addition to that, then you got the ministers, the preachers, the men of God, the ones who are responsible for bringing you the word. But here's the problem. Some of these preachers and ministers ain't been studying. See, the Bible says to study to show that self approved so that you can rightly divide the word. That's what I read. But apparently they ain't read the same thing I read. All of a sudden, it's like they'll take their favorite uh, scripture and then they'll mix it with a whole bunch of other stuff that ain't got nothing to do with it. Like, for example, you hear somebody go, ah, uh, that the Bible says uh, that ye uh, who walks on top of the earth uh, will also plant underneath uh, because we only got one life to live. And when you go to General's Hospital, then you'll see all of my children. Because why? Because God is loving. And you're sitting there going, this is so easy. Yeah, I don't know. And so now you have to understand something. You have your ministers that you just talked about. You have the Dr. Watts. That was the I love the Lord. That was the name of that choir. And why you got so many choirs anyway? You got the youth, young adult choir. You got the senior choir. You got the go then you got the gospel choir. Then you got the sunshine band. But see, that's old church. Now, if you go to one of these new churches, you probably just have a worship team. 
Mm-hmm. You have a team of just three to five people that worship the Lord with the microphone in their hands. And then they sing songs. Here I am to worship. And then it's like after they sing it, they, they talk to themselves. Here I am to bow down your And then if you be careful, some of your band members play R&B music while they ain't at church. So what you'll have is, you'll have Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to funny out. I'm just letting you know it ain't right. It's not right. And they don't get me started about that one member. See, I'm the last heterosexual choir director. I said it. I don't care. Do what you must. I've done it. You gotta watch some choir directors. They be doing all the business. But look, that's coming up to the end of my time. So what I want to do is, I want to bless you with the joke that every comedian always leaves you with. That this is a joke that you can take with you to work, or in your case, take it to you in a Zoom meeting. Go with me and tell it the right way, because I'm going to give it to you right. So don't you mess it up. And the joke is simply this: I have a friend named Dwayne, and Dwayne has an uncle who lives in Mississippi. Now, Dwayne hasn't talked to his uncle in 15 years. So out the clear blue, Dwayne decides to call his uncle. So he calls his uncle. He say, Unc, what's up? It's your nephew, Dwayne. Uncle got on the phone. I ain't got no nephew named Dwayne. Come on, Uncle. Quit playing. It's your nephew, Dwayne. What's going on? I ain't got no nephew named Dwayne. Dwayne had to remind him. Remember your baby sister? He go, yeah. He said, remember she had a baby boy? He go, little Dwayne. He said, well, I ain't little no more, Uncle. What's going on? So she said that Uncle went to her. He said, little Dwayne. They done stole my property, they done moved my property line back and they put a Mexican gym next door. Dwayne go, wait, what are you talking about? He said, they moved my property line. They pushed it back, they stole my land and they put a Mexican gym next door. Dwayne frustrated, he go, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. How do you know that it's a Mexican gym? His uncle said, because I can read. He said, the sign say live fitness. So y'all judging me, right? That, I'm on me, this. Not ugly fitness, it was a lot. I'm gonna go. So, should we go? Bullet up selector! Bullet up Thank you, Corey. So, one of my favorite parts on Sunday is the snack time. Because Jesus gave snacks. He said that we're supposed to drink his blood often in remembrance. Remembering Jesus. I did head and shoulders. So we're doing it for the body. I think this is knees and toes, y'all. This is knees and toes. That's what it is. Uh-huh. One more in case I forgot a toe. So we, we spent a nice little moment up in Chicago, right? One second. I got to remember Jesus one more time. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. He said often. Now, I tried to eat the body. I tried it. But I... I look at this, and this is a white cracker. I didn't have no wheat crackers. Plus, now that I think of it, since I'm dissecting everything, and before we go on to the other side and make some fixing my, you know, Paul said we're supposed to drink more than wine for its infirmities. So, should I go for Christian brothers? But it was Paul, so I think I need to go massage. Uh huh. So, um, while I go and endure for a night with Paul Masson. We're going to go to the south side of the country, uh, Alabama, by way of Alabama, Atlanta even. And we're going to spend a little time with Mr. Rod Vinker. 
Y'all show him some Southern hospitality because he's a Southern hospitality kid. Meanwhile, I'm going to go and find Mr. Masson. I mean, Paul. He is a disciple, you know. I like this. Uh, make, some, make some noise for yourselves for coming out here. Uh, Woo! Uh, I appreciate that, man. I'm just glad to see some people because I'm, I'm zoomed out. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to zoom nothing else. I, I, I'm saying these zoom rap concerts, zoom Keisha Cole going to hell she wants to for a versus battle. I had zoom birthdays. I had a zoom funeral in my family. Okay, my uncle died and they put the whole thing on zoom. But see, they don't realize my family country. We we, we from down South Alabama. They didn't know to put their phones on mute, so they started talking stuff about my uncle while he was in the past. <laughs> one of my uncles was like, is that my suit? That's my, can somebody zoom in on the body, please? Uh, that's my suit. And then one of my auntie was like, can you shut up, Charles, because it's a funeral. It's happening right now. He's like, I don't care who the hell funeral it is. I know I'm going to get my suit before he go in the ground. <laughs> so somebody come and say, well, what are we going to bury him? What are we gonna bury him in? Uh, you better bury him butt naked, cause that's my suit. I'm gonna come down there and get it. And <laughs> the funny part is that uncle got one leg. I don't know why he wanted the suit so bad. <laughs> corona changing everything. I don't even understand Corona no more, man. Like, like, you know, everybody they, they'll sham you if you go somewhere without a mask. But am I the only one that noticed when you walk to a restaurant? You only need your mask to go to the hostess stand. Please take your mask off. So I guess the cure to Corona is going to a restaurant. So everybody go to Applebee's tomorrow. That's it. <laughs> the cure to Corona is at Applebee's. Everybody's changing, man. Everything's different, man. Like, like these kids are different. Kids are different. You can't talk to them the way you want to talk to them no more. Can't, can't, you can't beat them no more. And those I said no more because we got beat, okay? But these new kids, you beat them, you going to jail that evening, right there. You know, you, you can't just beat them like you used to. But they don't appreciate nothing because they don't go from the same group we come from. Like my sister just threw her son a 16th birthday party. She said, hey Rod, I want you to be there. I'm going to buy him a car. I said, what kind of car are you going to get him? She said, oh, just a little something. A 2012 Lexus. <laughs> oh, I know what you're thinking. You know, because my car 98 right now. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? But it runs. I'm like, oh, that's a blessing. I got to see this. So I go to the birthday party. I get my phone. I hit the record button. She pull up in the yard. Big, big. Happy birthday, son. You gonna go, really, mom? You gonna buy me that old car and embarrass me in front of my friends? Bump you. Bump that car. Bump this whole party. I'm going in the house. Bam. Walked off. I looked at her with a straight face like, uh, who finna beat the hell out of him? Me or you? <laughs> <laughs> she gonna tell me, hey, don't worry about it, Rod. That's just him being him. See my man right here. That's what's wrong with these kids. Man right here, that's what's wrong with these kids. Man in the back, that's what's wrong with these kids. They don't know how it was when we was kids. Our first car was our mama and daddy. Old car. Right. That same old car we had been sitting in the yard ever since middle school. Your dad said, here's something, how you gonna fix it up? You gonna put some tires on it? He gonna paint it because the hood red, the old blue rest of the car, rusted brown. Ain't got no air in the summertime, no heat in the wintertime. He got that soft cushion and stuff hanging on top of the ceiling. You gotta lean your head to the side just to see how that ragged windshield. Mm -hmm. And don't you that get in the morning. And I do what? Warm that thing up. Because <laughs> you drove that car as is. Mm -hmm. But see, I had it worse than all of y'all. Including you, sir, I had it worse than you. Yes, sir, I had it worse than you. Because, see, my dad was a truck driver. I know it's from 18 with an asphalt truck, 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 big diesel truck, max skin truck. Well, you're wrong, sir. My dad was the ice cream man. I go outside on my 16th birthday, I got a big old ice cream truck with a red ribbon wrapped around it. Ma'am, you want to know how to do an ice cream truck? It still had sticks on the cherry bomb for our ice cream sandwich, strawberry shortcake, okay, push up. Remember the push up? You had to push up at the bottom? I hate that truck <laughs> driving to school. <laughs> you know how embarrassing it is to drive to school if people trying to flag you down talking about ice cream? You have to look at them like, excuse me, start ice cream on this truck. It's my car. <laughs> <laughs> Not just my car. I took my first girlfriend to the prom in an ice cream truck. <laughs> oh, I know you judge me, sir, but it was magical. She came outside with her little dress on, her little gown. She had a little tiara on. You know what I'm saying? She had a makeup beat to the gods. <laughs> <laughs> she had one of them old school ponytails. You know the ones you clip in at the top, but she had to gel the rest of that head up to make sure it matched. She was killing them. She was stunning them. 
Then she got in the car. She said, hey, Rod, we're going to drop this off at your job and get your real car. I'm like, who? This is my real car. You better put your seatbelt on. <laughs> she got an attitude though, bro. Tried to cut the radio on to cut me off. When she cut my radio on, she didn't realize they only had one station. Click. <laughs> Don't touch my stuff. Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> Bottom, man. Like, stuff is just out of control now. Everything's different. You know, like even with the pets. You know, white folks get a dog, they love the dog. They take the dog to the vet, find out the dog need $20,000 service. They send one text message out, they get $20,000. Five minutes. Mm-hmm. Black folks, we get a dog. We love the dog. We take it to the vet, find out he need $20,000 to serve. We'll put it behind all that delight. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> These dogs are different, man. You can't treat them like you used to back in the day. You know, these dogs now they got dog hotels and dog spas and dog vacation. We didn't have none of that when I was growing up. My grandma had two German shops in the backyard at all times. They didn't know what a vet was. They just had to eat grass. Figure it out. (laughs) A dog hotel. My grandma, me and my grandma took a road trip from Montgomery, Alabama, all the way to Colorado. Two-week trip. All we did before we left the house is put food in the yard, threw it on the ground, had a couple pans of grits, eggs, bacon, sausage, turnip greens, whatever she had cooked for leftovers. Two big buckets of ice, so when the ice melt, it turned to water, so the dog had something to drink. And them dogs were just fine. I got a dog during the quarantine. <laughs> thinking I was helping out society. I'm going to adopt the dog. I get dog, he got high blood pressure, cause low cholesterol, he got anxiety. He's like, he, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna be taking selfies on the beach, throwing the frisbee with my dog. You know how embarrassing it is to walk your dog in the morning and you have to give him an asthma pump? <laughs> Come on with it. Everything's different, man. I went on a date with this girl last year, right before Halloween. I wanted to impress her. I'm like, yo, man, I want to do something special. It's almost Halloween. And she had a son. I said, you know what, man? I'm going to get you some Halloween costume. She said, oh, that's perfect because he want to be Batman. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to go to Party City and buy me a Batman costume. (laughs) (laughs) I go to Party City and find out that the Batman costume costs $675 plus tax. I took him to Walmart and bought him some sheets. <laughs> I'm like, sir, you are about to be a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Time for it. You know what's funny, man? I like to ask people all the time when I get around with folks. Like, you know, what restaurant you feel like had the best customer service? And everybody always goes to the same fast food restaurant. Chick-fil-A. Everybody thinks it's Chick-fil-A. But I tell everybody, no, it's not. It's Chinese food restaurants. Yes. Chinese food restaurants right. have the best customer service on earth. Right. And you don't know it until I tell you the story that's going to make you know it. My man right here, you've had Chinese food before, right? Yes. Have you ever ordered it to go? Yes. Yes, you have. All right. I'm going to tell you how that situation went. I don't even know you, but I know how your Chinese food restaurant experience went. Mm-hmm. You called in. They're like, hello. Thank you. for calling you Chinese. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, man. I want some egg rolls. Okay, egg rolls. We're ready. Five minutes. That'll be two ninety-five. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I want like, some chicken and broccoli and soup. Okay, time. You want some chicken and broccoli and some spring rolls. That'll be twelve ninety-eight. Thank you. Be ready. Five minutes. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. 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 I would like some sweet tea with my order. Okay, one sweet tea, chicken and rice and broccoli, and some spring rolls. It'll be seventeen ninety eight. I'll be ready in five minutes. Ma'am, you don't know my name. Your name is number seventy one. <laughs> number seventy one. And then the magical part is, you go to the restaurant as soon as you walk in the door. Number seventy one. <laughs> Oh man, I think 
That's almost it for me, man. I just want to leave y'all with a couple of little PSA announcements. If y'all with me, <laughs> I just want to go through these. You know, uh, grown men as grown men. If you go to the barbershop, you have to paint your hair from here down. It's over, sir. Let it go. Mm. Don't let. Don't go to the barbershop on Saturday morning and put that cold sack on the back of your head. <laughs> Ladies, if you buy a belt and you put it on, and you got a belly on the bottom and the top of the belt, don't wear the belt. Don't wear the belt. Just let it hang. Just. If you hate your teeth, if you hate your teeth, and you decide like I'm done with these teeth, I'm gonna roll these in and get some veneers. Get those veneers in different shapes and sizes. You can't be out here with some unnatural Christmas lights in the front of your face. <laughs> Homeboy got some veneers. I'm like, hey, dog, how they look? I'm like, I don't know, but you need to get the dumper. Don't have to figure out how to get the <laughs> damn dumper. Trying to figure out. <laughs> you know. And I think that's it for me, man. Okay. I think you're robbing me. Get out of here. Woo! You know, I tell you, good humor. <laughs> Well, we thank you, Rod Minger, for that wonderful time that we spent with you as you shared all of your, your business within your family, especially your one leg uncle. We can already take a commercial break here. Uh, Fred, flush and, and, and spray, baby. Flush and spray. Please flush and spray. Your personal aroma is, is invading the space. Yeah, you'll kill all of the audience. Long distance. Spray my spray. Let me go help the old man. Me, Rod. We'll be right back after these commercials. I'm all right, Craig. Don't even know I'm lactose intolerant. Who in the house? <coughs> Probably it's the... Oh, it's Mingo. It's a new dummy. Strong. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to say farewell. Au revoir. Avida Zane. Adios. Ta ta. I want to thank you for coming to join me and my friends tonight on the first season and the first episode of I Can't Take You Nowhere. I want you to know that instead of your medicine and these elixirs and these syrups that a lot of doctors write prescriptions for, I, I want to write a different prescription. I want to write that prescription, Ecclesiastes 3-4. We've cried enough as a country. We've, cr we've cried enough worldwide. Tonight's show has been dedicated to the family of those souls that have been lost. In the United States, we have lost over 533 plus thousand people to COVID. That is not a funny situation. But if I could warm someone's heart with a smile, with a chuckle, with a laugh, then me and my friends, we did our job. I thank you for coming to be a part of our world tonight, and I'll see you next week. God bless you, and good night.